So welcome back. Uh, today, uh, this is the infamous uh, ZZR1200. I took all the crap off it, the uh, uh, the tank bag and the the seat brass and you know saddlebags are in the garage now. But um, anyway, we're going to talk today about uh, why I chose to put a stereo in this bike and uh, stress out all my electrical equipment. So there you go. I bought this bike to travel with. Um, I travel a lot with my older bikes. Uh, this is an 05 Kawasaki uh, 1200 ZZR and uh, it's basically a Ninja. It's a 1200 Ninja basically. Okay so I decided that if I did a lot of traveling and I had GPS, I got all that stuff on my phone and I'm really good with maps. I'm used to riding with maps. So not a big deal. Um, I didn't really need it. And uh, if you put too much electronics on your bike, since it's such a small uh, battery and a small electrical system, it really stresses the bike out as far as electronics and computer and everything is concerned. So um, I also cruise. Santa Cruz is like my favorite ride. So be, because of that, I decided... Um, that I was going to put a stereo on this. I was in Monterey once, and uh, this girl came up, and she had a really kick-ass stereo on her bike. And it was it was thumping. My bike doesn't thump so much, but um, it was really a nice uh, stereo. So um, that kind of inspired me and gave me the idea. So if I ever meet her again, I'll put her in a video, and I'll, I'll uh, attach it to this, and you'll know who she is. Anyway, so here we go. All right, first, uh, my options. For a head unit, um, I didn't want to put a full stereo in here. So what I did was I bought this little unit. Um, anyway, it's a it's base it's a stereo is what it is. It's a, there's a radio in here, there's an FM radio, and then there's an iPod interface. Now this is the plug-in to my amp. So that's basically that's the uh, that's where the earphones would plug in, and I'll show you that setup in a minute. And this unit right here, it has a, a play and stop button, and then this is uh, volume down, volume up, and then this is shuffle, so you can go through the playlist. And then this little button on the end here is you can switch from the radio to the iPod. Okay, so I put a little Velcro down, which is going to get replaced soon. I'm just, uh, I'm just now uh, getting it all settled where I want it. So this unit goes here and the wiring goes up in here this is the tailpiece and so that's a typical ipod deal so and then this goes back to the amps this piece right here goes back to the amps all right so here's my ipod and i bought this case at fries as well it's a plastic case has like a rubber hinge on it and i didn't want to put this velcro piece on the back of my ipod because then it's it's pretty much just gummed up forever so i bought this you can see the abuse it takes um, it's got paint on it and it's got scratches everywhere um, but it goes in like this the iPod sits right there and you close it and then these two little buttons on the side okay, this saves the iPod it costs probably 15 bucks and the iPod costs about 320 bucks so it was totally worth it kind of abuse that it's taken you can still see through the screen even though it's really scratched up. Uh, and then, of course, the pad itself uh, isn't got a lot of protection. This is not waterproof either, by the way. Um, but the uh, the disc pad itself, you can still see it and use it. So, so yeah. Underneath uh, the head unit, I've got this the, the loop part on the back of the iPod case, and then I've got the. Uh, you know the uh, uh, other piece of the velcro over here so this goes you can, you can see it's pretty tight on there so there you go now it's connected okay so what this does is it comes out here goes into this unit and then that sends a signal off to uh, off to the the amps and everything now the problem with an iPod is out out of the uh, iPod itself, you're only getting like uh, 2.9 volts. You have to push to the amps, and if you're going to push that kind of voltage to the amps, that means you got to use the gain 
on the amps to get any sound out of the speakers. So you're basically uh, pushing the compression up into the speaker so it sounds louder. Okay, so this is the part where it comes in really, really handy to have your kids around. Uh, yeah, anyway, so here's the back seat, and I'm going to pull this off here. And you can see right there, there's this metal piece. That's an aircraft aluminum. Uh, I forget the number of the aluminum that I use. Above the rear tire, there's like a plastic box, and I chopped all that out. And I lined it with uh, aluminum so that it gave me about a three and a half inch depth. Okay, so here's a shot. Um, this is where, this is right above the battery. And this is where the original tool set went and uh, a couple other little doodads. And what I did was I installed a line driver here. I don't know if you can see that very well. It's, uh, it's an arc audio. All my amps and everything's arc audio. And what this does is this side is the input. It takes the signal from the iPod, which is 2.9, and it boosts it out the other side to, uh, it's roughly about 9.3 volts. Okay, and then I have it piggybacked right here, one to this amp, which you can see right here, that's the base amp, and there's all the wiring and whatnot. I haven't finished the uh, interior piece, I have some, uh, I'm going to try to do in carbon fiber, but I think I'm going to end up with uh, just like uh, aluminum wraps and everything. This is all, uh, you know, none of this is finished work. It's all uh, just trying to make the pieces and get it to fit. And so there you go. So there's the other amps up front that way that's the one i showed you underneath of the the dash piece and that runs the front speakers so why do all this nonsense well it was a great project uh, kept me pretty busy for a couple of months um the only i haven't got the capacitor in yet the capacitor actually goes right here uh, but i have to do all the finish work here and uh, i use foam to seal off of the tailpiece so the ugliest tailpiece in the world actually becomes pretty useful when it's got that much airspace. And if you see the hump on the back, there's actually a speaker sitting down this way and facing down onto the, uh, I'll throw a picture into that, uh, of the mounting. but it's uh, actually face down into the aluminum and it's got a one inch standoff, so sound gets out of it. But this is the air box from about right here back and then all the way over. So the airspace is about 2.7, it's 0.275 of a cubic foot. So that's uh, a little over the bare minimum for the speaker. So there's an eight inch woofer in there somewhere. So part of that is on these lights here. I couldn't use the airspace inside of there, so I cut little holes uh, about two, uh, about an inch and a half by an inch and a half on the inside to let the air space be that speaker. Then I just sealed it here um, so that it would be airtight. And it sounds pretty good. I'll let you hear it here in a bit. And let's see, so on the inside of the cowls, I don't know how well you can see that. Right there is, uh, that's a six inch uh, speaker. It's a Sony, I don't remember the name of them, but they're, uh, they're marine speakers, so they're designed to be outside. They're supposed to be bass speakers, but I got them at full range, they sound better. 